Good evening. I'd like to start by thanking everyone in attendance, teachers, administration, staff, our families, friends, and my classmates. Thank you all for coming. Your presence here means a lot to all of us. My dad's cousin told me I should make this speech short and sweet, so I considered ending it right here. But I knew all of you would be on the edge of your seats waiting to hear my words of wisdom. <laughs> when I thought about what I was going to say here today, I was terrified at the thought of having to speak in front of so many people and decide the best course of action would be to write it just like my research paper and wait until the last minute. <laughs> Once I finally sat down and actually put some thought into what I was going to say, I realized that no matter what I said, I'd never put into words the memories from the time spent with all of you. Salutatorian speeches typically reflect on the past, but I'd like to start by addressing the future. You've all heard numerous graduation cliches, such as, graduation isn't the end, it's a new beginning. We are the future leaders of America, and today is the first day of the rest of your life. I'd like to quote some lyrics by Bon Jovi. It's my life, it's now or never. I ain't gonna live forever, I just wanna live while I'm alive. I think this song sums up my feelings this evening about the future. Starting today, everyone is on a different path, whether it is college, vocational, or work. Graduation gives us an opportunity to really live our own lives. Fountain Central has been our box for the past 13 years, where teachers know your name and your friends are sitting next to you in class. Well, it's time to step out of that box and experience new things and meet new people. We're not guaranteed any amount of time here on Earth, as we all know too well, so it's important to live life to its fullest. Never waste a second be out doing something fun and exciting, every wasted moment is a lost opportunity to become someone great. No matter what you do with your life, have fun doing it. Thirteen years of school have produced many memorable moments. Here are a few highlights. When terrorists attacked our country on September 11th, we sat in class horrified as we saw what happened on the TV. We were lucky to get our licenses in time for $3 a gallon gas to interfere with late night cruising in Petersburg. When it came to our new health code, Mr. Johnson and Dave Sims, or should I say, DJ MC and Eminem and Eminem, put it best. You can put anything in a pocket to make it healthy. While all of these are memorable events that we'll, we, that we'll be able to look back on for the next few years, the memories will eventually fade as new ones are made. There is, however, one event that has impacted the class of 2006 in such a way that it will never be forgotten, regardless of the number of years that pass by. The morning of March 5, 2004, to find our class as one that was strong, even in a time of such sadness. We all looked to each other for strength, and Evan brought our class closer together in grief. My friend, who could light up a room with his smile and incredible sense of humor, did something I'm sure he would have never thought he would do. He taught us a lesson of life, that we should never take our friends and family for granted, a lesson that was learned the hardest way possible. We all had wonderful memories of Evan. Who could forget seeing Evan do a flip after being tackled by Emily in the game of tackle tag? Every day in Mr. Welch's Bozo class, we'd find new places to hide Evan's books and laugh as he frankly looked for them before the bell rang. Only Evan would shave his head rather than just get a haircut. Besides being quite the character, Evan was a ladies' man. Looking back through all my pictures of him, I'm not sure there was any age where he didn't have at least one picture surrounded by women. I also remember my best friend as an athlete and artist. I'm sure most of you can remember seeing all of Evan's amazing drawings and paintings. To an untrained eye such as mine, I would consider him a gifted artist. He also excelled at any sport he tried. I know this because I played all the same sports with him. Even though Evan is in a better place now, he was still always a hold the place in our hearts. Graduation would be easier and a lot more fun if he was moving on with us. I'd like to close with a poem about the warm memory that no one will ever forget. We thought of Evan today but that is nothing new. We thought of Evan yesterday, and well, tomorrow too. Remembering Evan is easy, he was a joy each day. He will always be among us, as in our hearts will stay. We will always love you, Evan. Class of 2006, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you.
Also, I would like to thank my parents. They have supported me ever since I can remember, uh, especially the last three years since my older brothers have all graduated and I've been the only one at home. Um, that's had its benefits, also its downfalls. I want to thank all of my friends and teachers who have put in the extra effort to tell me either to do my homework or to take a break and have some fun. Who knows how far I would have made it without the help and support all of them have given me throughout the years. When many students graduate high school, they go to college, the military, to the workforce, or stay at home and start a family. But no matter where or what they do, they'll eventually define their lives for how they have succeeded or failed in all of their endeavors. But what does it mean to actually succeed? Webster's Dictionary defines success as accumulation of material possessions or the attainment of a position of power or prestige or perhaps even fame. This is what the typical stereotype of success is. However, I believe that success is in the eye of the beholder. For example, a stay-at-home mom might say that raising her child to become a student who relatively stays out of trouble, makes decent grades, and eventually sits here one day among the rest of us, that would be a successful life. Or maybe a dad who has to work three jobs just to provide for his family, who may not have the big corporate job, but he is still able to give his family the things that they need to live a happy and full life. His children wouldn't care if he came home in a suit and tie or became all greasy and covered up in dirt. They would see him as a dad who loves them and would do anything in the world to give them all that they wanted. In my eyes, he would be just as successful as any other man. But then, what about that other man? The man or woman who sits behind that big desk who put in the extra hours to get what he or she was that day. They are just as successful as anybody else, as long as they think they are. If in their minds, having the best of everything was always what they wanted, and they are truly satisfied with the way they are living, then they too are successful. But on the other hand, the person who does have the Ferrari, 60-inch plasma TV, and a huge bank account may not be as happy as the person who does work for three jobs and is able to provide for his family. Perhaps all of those possessions are not all that they need in order to be truly satisfied with their life. So what is the use of all that stuff if you're not even content to enjoy it? But who says you have to be out of high school and have a career in order to be a successful individual? What about that one student who has all of the friends you can imagine, is wearing a smile on his or her face, and even when everything seems to be going wrong, can step into that classroom and say just the right thing to make your day work. We had a student like that. His name was Evan. I believe that he was a successful 16-year-old. He may not have been at the top of his class, nor had the most money, but he always had a smile on his face. Even on the day he died, he was on his way to something he loved. No, sorry, it wasn't school. It was baseball practice. He was en route to being with his teammates and friends. I don't believe that there was one dry in that school that day. Now, if that doesn't sow a successful life, I don't know what does. Personally, I define success as going to college and graduating as a registered nurse. Apparently, like several other of my classmates, for I'm not the only one going to be a nurse, um, blood, broken bones, poking people with needles, and getting paid for all of that just sounds like pure enjoyment. You can ask Mr. Welchums himself. I absolutely love getting the cat out, gutting it open, cutting it up, and studying everything that was inside of it. The human body just simply fascinates me. I would always pick his brain during the lessons and take all the information I could take out of it and or half the other classmates because they wanted to move on. I have been asked, however, why stop at being a nurse? Why not become a doctor? Well, first of all, I'm just getting out of high school after being in it for 13 more years. I don't want to go back for nearly that long again. Also, I have learned that nurses are people who become closer to the patients. They don't just see them as symptoms. They know the story behind the illness or the injury. Besides, I believe that any nurse can be just as successful as a doctor as long as they believe it and they're doing what they feel like they should be doing. But along with my career, I want a family. Family has been a huge part of my life ever since I can remember. I can't, yet can, at the same time, wait for my own. I want to teach my children how to ride a bike, 
bake some chocolate chip cookies, or type their final English research paper in only two weeks without completely stressing out. I want to marry a man who will love and respect me for who I am the rest of my life. All these things together spell success in my eyes. Seth, my boyfriend, gave me a quote that he thought I might want to use in my speech, which he gave this to me just this past Sunday. I was cutting a little close, I know, but as some of you might know, that's just how I do things best. The quote was in a book by John Wooden, the college basketball coach. Yeah, no, not another surprise that this quote came from Seth. Anyway, Mr. Wooden said that a successful journey whatever dreams you might have are all stepping stones to your final destination. So that 50 years down the road, you'll find yourself looking back at all the accomplishments and mistakes that you may have made that got you where you are today. And you know that you have no regrets about how you have lived. And I believe that you have reached your final destination and have lived a complete and successful life. And I hope all of you that are sitting here in front of me today reach that goal. As principal of Fountain Central Junior Senior High School, it is my responsibility to ensure that the requirements of the State of Indiana, the Commission on Education, and the Southeast Fountain School Corporation are met by those students intending to graduate. Superintendent Dr. Barnes, I hereby certify to you that the members of the Fountain Central High School Class of 2006, assembled here tonight, have successfully fulfilled all these requirements. At this time, I present to you as candidates for graduation, the class of 2006.